Well, welcome to Bible Studies for Life. We're in part three, session three. I think if you're just looking at the total number of weeks, I don't know, we're on week 10 or 11 or something like that. But uh, today we look at this third characteristic of the Christian life, which is one of the most difficult for many of us, and that is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Today we're going to look at just a, a short little conversation that Jesus has with his disciples, with Peter especially, and then a parable that he teaches on forgiveness. comes out of Matthew chapter 18. What a, a passage that we've probably heard, maybe even quoted many times, familiar with it, and we just want to dive into it a little bit, see what it has to say for us, how it might help us today. So Peter approaches Jesus. It says, Peter approached him and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? As many as seven times? Now, I just picture Peter thinking, I'm just going to put a number out there. You know, seven times, I mean, wow, seven whole times? And Jesus brings him back and trumps it big time. I tell you, he says, not as many as seven, Jesus replied. And I think Peter went, oh, whew, good, seven, that'd be tough. But Jesus said, 70 times seven, 70 times seven, 490 times? What am I supposed to count all those? Well, I think the clear thing that Jesus is saying to Peter here, more than you can keep track of. You forgive them more times than you can count. If you're counting, if you're, if you're marking on the board every time and you're just waiting to get to 490, you've missed the whole point of what Jesus is saying. He is saying more than you can count, more than you could ever add up. Peter, keep forgiving and keep forgiving and keep forgiving. And I'm sure, you know, I mean, I don't know about you, but kind of that initial response is, ah, now wait a minute. Keep forgiving? Now, now let me just, before we go farther with this, let's be clear that forgiveness does not mean a restoration of trust, okay? There's a difference in forgiveness and restoring trust or place or position. For instance, if somebody somebody hits you and you forgive them, and they start to take another swing, you can duck, you know. In fact, you don't have to stand near them anymore. If they hit you four or five times, and you, it doesn't mean I have to keep walking with you. I can find other people to be my friends. It doesn't mean that I don't forgive you, but I don't restore you to that same place or that same position or that same level of trust. Because trust is broken, trust has to be re-earned, Right? So forgiveness does not mean that there, that place is automatically restored. And I think oftentimes we miss this in church. We think if, so, if we forgive them, then we have to let them, everything has to be restored back exactly the way it was. And that if we don't restore it back exactly the way it was, then we haven't forgiven them. And that's not true at all. You know, the, the truth is that, I mean, think about this. If, if a pastor does something to break trust within his congregation. Let's say he has an affair. We see that, you know, way too often, don't we? But let's say that happens, okay? And and uh, some minister in the church has an affair and the church says, well, you know, you can't be the minister here anymore. And some people in the church inevitably will say, but I thought we were supposed to forgive him. Well, we can forgive him, but by just because we forgive him does not mean he gets to return back as if nothing ever happened. Forgiveness means I'm not going to hold this against you anymore, but it also means that I also the break in trust means that something's happened to break that trust and, and I don't have to restore you to the place of trust immediately or ever even. Okay? There's a difference there. You have to re-earn that trust. And and sometimes, depending on what it is, that can be a lot harder than other things, right? So we re-earn that trust in that place, but that doesn't happen automatically. And the fact that we don't trust somebody does not mean we haven't forgiven what they've done. And this, this is a very narrow line, okay? We've got to be real careful, and that's a hard thing. That tension, that pull is tough, but that's okay. We've got to live within that tension and hold that tension clearly. Okay, so Jesus now shares with them a parable and uh, you're probably familiar with this parable that he, that he shares. He talks about uh, this king that wanted to settle some accounts of the servant. So he brings in this one servant who owed a large amount, 10,000 talents, he says. And, and he didn't have anything. He couldn't, he couldn't pay it back. 
And so he says, well, we're, we're just going to have to take everybody from your family. We're going to sell them all into slavery to pay your debt. And the servant says at this, the servant fell face down before him and said, be patient with me and I will pay you everything. Then the master of that servant had compassion, released him and forgave the loan. Uh, okay, so what well, we have this story of the, the king that, that uh, says, okay, I'm going to forgive that debt because he begs, right? He falls face, face down. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things, okay? Let's first look at, because in this parable, we see the king is the father, is, the, is God, and us is the servant, right? I want you to look at the father's heart, okay? First, it says, the master of that servant had compassion, he had compassion on him. He released him and he forgave him. Those three things, okay, those three words. Compassion, one of my favorite Greek words. So every time I get a chance to talk about it, I will. But that Greek word is splagnizomai. And splagnizomai literally means the turning over of your stomach, the turning over of the bowels, uh, the guts turning upside down. And, and it has it then at this, this feeling of, when your stomach just turns upside down inside because you're hurting so bad for someone, that's compassion. I think of parents. Uh, parents, we know this. When our kids, we see our kids going through something and we can't get them out of it, we can't rescue them out of it, they're just going to have to go through it, and it hurts, doesn't it? I mean, physically, it hurts. Our stomachs turn upside down. That's compassion. That's that word, splagnizomai, and that's this word that, he, that gets translated compassion. His stomach hurt for this man. He saw what this man was going through and he hurt for him. He had compassion on him, but compassion always acts out somehow. It shows it's compassion that doesn't act out is not compassion. It's pity. Okay. This is not pity. This is compassion. It acts out. What does he do? First word, he says he released him. He set him free from the debt. He set him free from the dead. I want you to think about that just in a in a very in a Christian theological way. What happens when you get saved? You get set free from your debt, right? You're set free. It's no longer held over your head. It's no longer a burden over you. You're set free. And then he says, "You are forgiven." The literal meaning of forgive is to let go, and that's the word released also means that to let go. He let go. He let it go. But I want you to see, this is not mere mercy, okay? Mercy is, I could do something for you, but I'm choosing not to do something. Because look at what the man asked for. He says, the man says, be patient with me and I will pay you everything. He says, look, if you'll just give me enough time, I'll pay my debt. But what does the king do? The king forgives it. He forgives it all. This is grace, Mercy is when I don't do what I could do. Grace is when I do something I don't have to do. He decides to give him more than he asked for. Well, that's God's grace, isn't it? He gives us way more than we ask for. He forgives. He releases because of his great compassion. And I want you to also just look at the debt. Because this is the other part of this deal, right? Look at the debt that is owed. He had this huge debt that he owed. And that requires that that understanding of where we are and that's really what jesus gets to is he continues this story he says then after he summoned him his master said to him you wicked servant or the i mean i'm sorry the servant goes out he finds one of his servants right he finds somebody else that owes him a little bit and he says you got to pay me and at that point the king grabs him and says says, um, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you also have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? The, the man leaves the king after having his great debt forgiven, goes out, finds, a, finds somebody else that owes him a pittance and, and wants to kill him for what he owes him. And the king says, no, wait a minute, we're not doing that. We're not going there. He brings him back in and says, look at what happened. Okay. I want you to notice the debt that we have is so great to God. It's so great. We cannot forget how great our debt is. That, that requires humility, right? Humility and graciousness go together. When, we're, when we realize what our debt is, then it's easier and more likely that we'll be gracious to others. And if we are not gracious to others, it's probably because we didn't realize how great our own debt was. Humility and graciousness to go together. They're tied together. This, 
this problem that this man has, the, the servant has, is that he forgets that he's a sinner. He forgot. I mean, he left the presence of the king and forgot how much, how much he owed, what his debt was, how great it was. And, and look at the word that he says. Jesus uses this word, you wicked servant. It is wicked to be unforgiving. You ever thought about that? It is wicked to be unforgiving. And I think that's a big problem today is a lot of us forget. A lot of people have forgotten or maybe don't realize, don't admit that they are sinners and that we, we owe, we've got our problems too. So we need to be gracious to others because God is going to be gracious to us. We need to be gracious to others. God has forgiven so much that we've done. We need to forgive what others have done. It's part of what goes on in cancel culture where people can't forget or forgive anything anybody else has ever done. We've got to forgive. We've got to let go of those things. It doesn't mean they get restored to a place of trust immediately, but it does mean that we let go. We set them free. We no longer hold it over their heads. We no longer bring it back up. We forgive. One of the hardest things in the world to do. I hope this helps as you look at this passage, a great passage, a familiar story. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Trying to get to 100 subscribers, so help me out there. Uh, we'll get, we'll uh, see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.